Hello and welcome, Pastor John here, and I uh, want to welcome you again to our um, series here, and as we're going through the uh, prophets in the Old Testament, uh, we're going to be looking at the Book of Lamentations today. So, following the Book of Jeremiah, we have the Book of Lamentations, which is also written uh, by the prophet Jeremiah. So please open your Bibles and turn to Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 52 to 60. That's the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 52 to 60. All right, and here we read. My enemies, whom I have never harmed, hunted me down like a bird. They threw me into a pit and dropped stones on me. The water rose over my head and I cried out, This is the end. But I called on your name, Lord, from deep within the pit. You heard me when I cried. Listen to my pleading. Hear my cry for help. Yes, you came when I called. You told me, Do not fear. Lord, you have come to my defense. You have redeemed my life. You have seen the wrong they have done to me, Lord. Be my judge and prove me right. You have seen the vengeful plots my enemies have laid against me. God bless you on this word. Crying out to God. So in this passage here, in the book of Lamentations, a little background. Um, as we said, the book is written by the prophet um, Jeremiah, and uh, he reveals his personal suffering and agony, um, uh, which is a reflection of experiencing God's divine judgment. So <coughs> what's happening here is um, we're now in the, um, as God says, I will, I will uh, punish the Israelites if they don't turn away from false prophets and worshiping uh, false deities and gods. So here it comes to pass. And so in this book, there are five lamentations in total. This is the one we just read. It's the third and the uh, central, the key one, right? Uh, the third and the central one. And it deals with the fall of Jerusalem. And, and, and that's in 586 BC. So Jeremiah is, you know, traditionally called, it's like man-made tradition, but he's called the weeping prophet. Um, and why is that? Why is he called the weeping prophet? So his suffering is struggle, struggling. We read in the book of Jeremiah. So if you want to turn back, go back to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verses 18 to 22. Jeremiah 8, verses 18 to 22. We read, Jeremiah writes, My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem? The people asked. Is your king no longer there? Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. The harvest is finished and the summer is gone. The people cry, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and I'm overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? God bless you with this word. So we see here Jeremiah expressing, uh, very similar to the Lamentations, um, the, the difficulties um, um, he experiences with the people. And so in the book of Jeremiah, which, we, uh, which I just uh, read from, the people, they even try to kill Jeremiah, right? They throw him into a cistern, right? And then there's the fall of Jerusalem. And then J Jeremiah has to deal with false prophets. And, you know, also one thing is uh, God even forbids Jeremiah to marry. So it's a lot of hardship um, that Jeremiah has to deal with. And so that's a little background to understand uh, the lamenting, the lamentations, um, of Jeremiah as the weeping prophet, as God's spokesperson. 
So the topic is, so we look at the, as we look at the book of Lamentations, similar to the book of Jeremiah, we ask, what does it mean to cry out to God? What does it mean to cry out to God? So let's go to our initial passage and look at verse 52 to 54. We read there, we find out uh, that Jeremiah is persecuted by his own people, even though Jeremiah wants to warn and help them, right? And um, verses 55 to 57, when you go read those verses, it basically shows um, how much Jeremiah is suffering. Um, however, um, he turns out, he cries out to God, and in verse four, uh, 58, that's the turning point, uh, God responds to Jeremiah's calling out to him. That's God's responding to Jeremiah's calling out to him. And that's awesome. Uh, why? Because in verses 59 to 60, um, God sees the injustice that's being done and responds according to a sovereign divine plan, purpose, and timing. So we see here um, God's absolute sovereignty. So, but he does hear and he, and he, and he does listen as Jeremiah cries out. Um, so how can you apply this to your life? What does it mean for you to cry out to God? It means that when we are struggling, God wants us to call out to him, right? So you and me and all believers, all of us, right? We all struggle at times and um, whatever it may be, God wants us to call out to him. Why? The reason is because God listens and cares, our invitation is basically always to call out to God. So Lamentations 3, chapter 3, um, 22 to 23. This is preceding our passage for today. A few more hints here, what, what, what God is up to and what God wants us to do. So Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 23. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. God bless you of his word. So every new day we experience, and that's God's blessing and gift. Um, um, God uh, looks after us. Every day is a blessing and gift. Think about every day we, we um, no matter what the challenges may be, um, not to diminish any personal suffering or struggle. But um, every time we wake up, we, we breathe and have air in our lungs and in our life. We want to thank the Lord for that, right? Because God can call all of us home at any time, believer or unbeliever, right? So it's just something we want to express our gratitude to God, as Jeremiah does too. And so also understand that God is a righteous judge. God is a righteous judge. God will redeem those who are his. In other words, um, people who are part of the remnant, uh, believers, uh, the body of Christ, so to say, uh, in, the, in the Old Testament and today, all of us who are Christians, um, we have uh, the expression of God's, uh, God as righteous judge. And so, this is Lamentations chapter 3, 25 to 26. The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. God bless the reading of his word. And that is also who our Lord Jesus Christ is. That is Jesus as God in the flesh. That is who he is. So in Matthew 14, 29 to 31, we read. It's very close, very similar to you know, what's going on in Jeremiah's life and his calling out. So Matthew 14, chapter 14. 29 to 31 we read yes come jesus said so peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward jesus but when he saw the strong wind and the waves he was terrified and began to sink save me lord he shouted jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him you have so little faith jesus said why did you doubt me God bless reading of his word. So we see here, um, I encourage you to read this event if you haven't already. In Matthew chapter 14, um, 
um, Jesus walking on the water, but also Peter. And uh, uh, what happens here is that um, Peter um, uh, listens to Jesus' voice, uh, follows his word, and, um, and walks on the water himself. However, he's distracted, and um, by the waves, then turns his focus off of Jesus, um, and uh, then he begins to sink. He sees the surroundings and all the challenges surrounding him, um, but he does the right thing. Peter does the right thing, and that's our call too. Uh, Peter shouts out, save me, Lord, and what happens is that Jesus reaches out, grabs him, and even though he says, uh, you have so little faith, it's not that Jesus is saying, um, um, that in a, in, in a way like, oh, you know, you could have had more faith, but it's just making a statement, uh, um, asking, he reveals Peter's heart. So he, um, Peter had doubt in his heart. That's why Jesus asks, why did you doubt me? Right? So that's like Jeremiah, our call is to call out to Jesus um, at all times, really, right? Not just when we are in need, but also when things are going well, or especially when things are going well, uh, we always are called to reach out to Jesus. And uh, there's always something he does. Um, we may not see it, we may not even be aware of it, but he does because we have his promise. So um, calling out to Jesus um, is uh, crying out to God, as God in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, is always um, not just the best thing to do, but that's what God wants us to do. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.